Sticky, isn't it? It's getting hot in here. So take off all your nose. I'm getting hot in here. I'm gonna take my nose off. Bev Hartnell, I've been doing them 15 years now. I'm starting to struggle with the night shifts. Night shifts are really tricky. My mum used to do night shifts all the time. In fact, my first job ever as an editor, I had to do the night shift, which was 12 hours from, what was it, from, you'd come in at six and you'd go home at six. It was for a news station. Um, and I did that throughout Christmas. Yeah, that was, that was a bit, and on Christmas day, I had to drive to my uh, girlfriend's family. Morning, Gillian Barras, Fiona Reed, Shauna Jean, Brenda McGee, B. Stiber, Linda Fissett, uh, Wendy Stewart, Nicola, Nicole Marcella, Hazel Malbon, Lorraine Eads, Paul Honeyman, uh, Margaret Wright, Butterfly Bell, Tim, all right, Tim boy, uh, Elizabeth Gordon, Nikki Hughes, Nanny Bluebell, uh, So Unique, Polly, Nick Walewski, Annie, Anne Smiths, Hobbies for healthy minds, moaning. Coffee moaning. So when people sometimes say, oh, it's a bit miserable today, or a bit, it's because we're having a moan. It's an opportunity to moan and have a laugh. We're here to moan and have a laugh. Hi, Merck. Who said that? Hi, Merck. Bobby Ward. Buses Amanda. Morning. Clodagh Egan. Morning. Why not? Let's hit the thumbs up before you've even listened to what I've got to say. That would be just incredible. Nadia Kowser. Um, Heather Gunn, Shelley Silver, Hello, Shonster Migmon, Faith Goodman, Susie Eldridge, Nicole Walsh. If you've been watching our eating in the sun, where I sound like a, uh, for members, obviously I sound like, um, well, I just sound like, I sound like an idiot. Nicole Walsh, Della, Kerry Gracie, Laurel Nichols. I did the voice many, many, many years ago for one of the Red Bull adverts. Red Bull gives you wings. Do you remember that? You're looking well, Mark, DC. Thank you, DC. Are you named DC after the DC comic uh, extended universe? Uh, Jill Lister, Helen Groves, Mars Kid Gaming. Hi from Perth. Uh, send all our love to Perth. Is it raining in Perth? We've got storms predicted here, Mask Kid Gaming. We have, I was reading a story, I think we talked about it on the Sunday show, about gran, granny, Granny gamers. Do you know anyone who's a grandparent who plays PS4, PS3, PS5, PS, Nintendo, whatever the other one is? Do you know anyone? Morning, Dazzle Boys, sending you big love. Um, Clodagh Egan, Mark, your voice in Eating the Sun is so sexy. Bloody hell, is it? Nadia's got to get in the kitchen and cook up a storm. What a load of old nonsense, eh? <laughs> it's a great show, I have to say. Bless him, Teddy has been watching. Nadia's dad has been watching them and he's just blown away. These are like cinema, he says, which is lovely. Um, I'm an auntie gamer, Laurel Nichols. I can well imagine in my retirement years at the age of 90, just playing, I'd never have time to play games, just playing games, that would be so cool. Uh, we played something called Pathfinder whilst we were in Norfolk, which is like a, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, but I love that. I love computer games, I love it, but there's never time to play them. Um, yes, my grandparents did. Uh, yeah, gaming is cool. Where is Nadia? Nadia's still at Lisa's. There's no getting away from it. When those two get together, it's an absolute riotous, crazy upsurge of nuttiness. Uh, she's vlogging it though, so chin chin. I'm just going to down my vodka, don't tell her. Mm. Mask Kid Gaming, you don't play games, and yet you've got gaming in your name. How ironic. Oh, who's that? Gulson Gamolcini. Gulson Gamolc... Sorry, I'm definitely pronouncing that incorrectly, but morning back to you in Turkey. How are things in Turkey? Um, it's very warm here in Scotland, watching the birds having a bath in a basin of water. There's something quite beautiful about a sparrow rubbing its chest in dirt. I don't know where that came from. Has Nadia got a hangover? I think she's so got a hangover, she's probably feeling it in her feet. Morning from Inverness in Scotland, Sheila Sturton. Welcome, Bev Hartnell, hello. Diane Sylvester, Xbox, one grandparent of two. Fantastic, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I wish my nan, I wish my nan had got, got into tech. We kept trying to get broadband, we kept trying to get her on the computer. Try, kept trying to get her to watch YouTube and all that kind of stuff, which she just wouldn't. Ah, Mask Kid Gaming, you're using your kid's account. <sighs> Morning, Emma Carter. Susie Othman. Hey, 
This heat, it's getting hot in here. I think all my clothes, it's so hot. Do you like this? I took umbrage with the idea that I'm never gonna lose my love handles. So I got a pair of scissors and I cut them off. Can't bear this heat, Jackie Valino. Okay, come on guys, what are your solutions for the heat? Popping a, a, a pillowcase in the freezer? It's the only one I know, so I tell everyone it, as if I'm sort of some kind of cocky twat. Um, it's too hot, Sam JP. Hate to moan, but I can't deal with it. I followed you, by the way, um, so that we could pick up the discussion from email. Um, 71 degrees feels like 80, Tim. You're absolutely right. I think under my armpits yesterday, this is probably a bit too much information, I think it was about 120 degrees. It really was, it was, it was hot. It was really hot under there. Uh, the heat is great, it's like being abroad, Paul M2112. I, yeah, I've often said, Paul, that I like heat, but I like it in the right place, and the right place isn't Croydon. Hot water bottle in the freezer, hate it, can't wait to feel cold. I mean, I just love freezing cold water poured from the fridge and drunk like crystal meth, I was gonna say, but that's not right, is it? Uh, my eczema really playing up to him. Oh, do, really, I find the sort of, well, yeah, heat, heat is bad for it, but I find that humidity sometimes helps. Hello, Mark, Jenny J, sounds like Mauritius. Closed windows blind, yes, good point, Faith Goodman. Everyone seems to think that they should open the windows, and it's a little bit like being in an air-conditioned car. If you open the windows, the air conditioning doesn't work. If you open the curtains in your bedroom, it's gonna be a sweltering sauna by the time you go to bed, which for some of us is not a bad idea, because it means your partner strips off. But um, it gets very hot. Put your feet in a basin of cold water, which cools you down and foil on waters to reflect the sun. That's a good idea. Um, I, I'm dreading it. I've got a meeting this afternoon. And I'm dreading sitting there and my armpits just doing that. So I might sit like this. Wrung out wet towels help cool dogs. Yeah, we've got fan. Oh, and Chi Chi's coming out today. Um, Toffee is no longer infectious, according to all the rules. Um, but all of Chi Chi's wounds have improved. Uh, her eyes have improved. We have been caring for her minute by minute, day by day. Emma Carter, I haven't slept for two nights. Can't use my CPAP machine as it's blowing hot air. Oh, that's so hard. Good morning, Mark. Charlene Hayden Fox, hope you're well. I'm just getting ready to go and see my nan for the first time since lockdown. Go, go, go. So Freedom Day. I posted something on my Instagram, Mark underscore Adderley, uh, all about the idea that Freedom Day for one can be a day of fear for others. And I think it's important to remember that. Whilst on the one hand, we can go out and we can flex our muscles and spread our wings, for some people, and I think there's quite a few of, on, few of you on here, um, it's a moment for trepidation and anxiety and, and what, what not. So I think you all do. I think you're all very tolerant. You're all very sort of generous and charitable and, and caring. So you're a very empathetic bunch. Um, you really are. So I think all of you are on the same, um, on the same page with that, being tender to others rather than marching up to people going, I have a right to do dinner. Oh, uh, good morning, Millie Parfit. Good luck in your interview at 9.30 by video call. Good luck, I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, Rachel Dodge, my DD4 was told she'd been in contact with someone with COVID on Sunday, which means we're stuck here till next week. Well, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about it. Simone Turley. Happy birthday to you. And I'll, happy birthday to you. And I'll, happy birthday. Dear Simone, sorry, your name went up. Simone Turley, Ooh, happy birthday to you. Um, Tia Deacon, although it was Freedom Day, what you said about mask etiquette was so correct. I went to Tesco and uh, most, oh, sorry, it keeps flying up so fast, and most were masked up. Love your Joe 90 glasses. Joe 90. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna shut up being an absolute douche. 
Um, so, vaccine passport. So, did anyone else watch Boris? Yes or no? Did you watch Boris bumbling his way through his self isolation press briefing last night? <laughs> Rachel Hardman, shout out. There you go. Oh, God, I had a car crash on Saturday, broken and battered. Oh, my God, that's awful. Uh, that's awful. Sending you all I love. I'm sorry, darling. No, no. Uh, oh, quite a few of you know your Boris is fab, says Paul. Paul <laughs> Dorney Harvey. I think he looks. He, he does look a bit sort of. You're sort of a bit shocked, like he's in a. <laughs> it's like a... <laughs> nightclubs. <laughs> Young people have given it so much, and nightclubs no. He looked hot and sweaty. He probably was, to be fair. We all were. What about Cummings' new interview? Shocked. Um, yeah, I think that's tonight, isn't it? Dominic spilling the beans. He's going to do a sort of... It'd be funny if Dominic Cummings did his interview like Princess Diana did, like this. I want to know if he's wearing glasses to read his notes. After all, he did go on a drive to Barnard Castle to test his eyesight. Um, BBC Two, 7pm. Boom, be there or be square or, I don't know, be a Tory. I don't know, whatever it is. I'm just going to sit here and drink this for a minute. Two years of no alcohol, that's a boy channel, that's good. So nightclubs. I have mixed feelings about nightclubs. I have mixed feelings about the nightclubs decision and I'll tell you why. I'm not, I'm not entirely... I know there's been a huge outcry from nightclubs uh, it, and the worry is... that. So for those of you who don't know, so what Boris has said is from September, uh, people are not going to be able to go into or potentially it has to be got through Parliament and there's much talk that it might not get through Parliament. But if you're going to an enclosed space such as a pub, uh, a night... Well, he's talking specifically about nightclubs at the moment, but the, the worry is this, could this creep... Could there be this thing called creep, policy creep, where it then amounts to uh, pubs. Where do you draw the line? Theatres, clubs, all this kind of stuff. Um, so from September, there's this idea that unless you can prove you've had a double jab, you won't be allowed into a nightclub. Can I just ask, if that's the case and that's what he's said, what do you think? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Just say good or bad. Go like that. Good or bad? I mean, Brenda McGee, just whilst you, Patrick Salt, that's good. Proof of nature, it's good, good. Defo, good. Bad, Elizabeth Gordon, Emma Atkins, bad. Tell us why you think it's bad, Nicola and Wendy as well. Hazel Malborn, Christine Ashby, bad. Okay, it's kind of split. Well, no, probably just teetering towards good. Jen, Jenny Allenby, bad. Um, can those, I think, I think unsure user one, that's, that's, that's a fair point. I've already got my COVID passport and paper to the form for pubs, knew we may need them. Um, Chance de Migmon, bad. Can you give us, could you give, oh, negative should be enough, Nicola Higgins. Give, yeah, give us some kind of reasons as to why I think it's bad. I think, when he said it, and I've seen the backlash, and a, a lot, I can understand nightclubs saying this is going to create, uh, you know, it's going to impact on our business. It's a bit discriminatory, who said that, Clover Egan, yeah. Um, I think, well, there's a couple of things there. I think the government are doing this in order to kind of squeeze and give purpose to young people getting the jab. I think there's, a, there's about three million who haven't got the jab. Uh, and I think there's probably a sense that they're the safest, they're the youngest, they're the most robust. This is seen as a disease of the vulnerable and the old and the infirm. Um, we know it isn't always necessarily. Um, but isn't there an argument to say that if they don't do this, if you do this, you're going to still have punters, right? You might not have as many as you used to have, but you're still going to have punters. But if you don't do this and there's an outbreak or whatever, you're going to have to close down. And then, of course, there's the thing of, I think I would rather, I mean, clubs, when I went to clubs, they're intensely sweaty. I mean, do you remember right early on when Singapore and I think South Korea got a grip on things? It all kicked off again, didn't it, in, par in, in passports, in, um, in nightclubs. 
Uh, oh, that's an interesting point, Tasha Payne. Why beginning of September? Why not so it as of yesterday, six weeks off, no return? If I'm really honest, I felt a lot of what was said in the press briefing yesterday was about the fact that come September, October, we're going to be in a sort of battle with this with this virus again. I think I think that was kind of kind of the point. Uh, how Jane Bentley? They are discriminating discriminating against those who can't have them for health reasons. Yep, I tell you another thing that might happen because of the nightclub thing. Um, I think you will end up seeing, I mean, there's already been illegal raves during lockdown, but I think it would be an absolute instigator, absolute instigator of illegal, uh, totally reprehensible uh, rave type parties on the edge of motorways. I'll be going, uh, will you be going? And we've severed the connection between parties and raves. Do you know what I mean? I think it will n nudge like it, like these things often do. It'll nudge it underground. What do you think, guys? What do you think? I'm less concerned about the COVID spreading clubs. There probably would have been illegal raves, it's only me. More the strain on NHS and paramedics from drunken behavior like fights, injuries, alcohol poisoning and drugs. 400 people die every day from cancer, uh, I think diabetes or pneumonia. Um, we're not doing anything about that. Uh, three quarters of a million cases of cancer are caused by alcohol. But we would never dream of banning that, would we? No. Um, do you see what I mean? It's a bit weird, isn't it? It is a bit weird. Uh, so where, what's my position on the nightclub thing? I, I'm not entirely against it because I do think that the nightclub scenario, agreed, it's a sector that needs to be looked after, but I think it's a very unusual sector it's, it's not like theatres and cinemas and other interior spaces like offices because everyone isn't bouncing around like nutters, sweating, uh, slipping around each other, touching each other, snogging each other in the same way. I mean, I'm not saying that doesn't happen in some workplaces. It certainly did when I was younger. But do you know what I mean? It's not happening as much in those other spaces. Certainly, I'm, I'm not snogging and sweating alongside people at the theatre or in the cinema, though today we might. Do you get me? So I just wonder, okay, I think it's creating a two-tier society and to me it will not stop at nightclubs, where do you draw the line? I mean, I think if you, I think maybe there are exceptions should be made for people who, um, for people who need, you know, uh, exemption from, from being jammed. I think you could do that. Uh, I think it will be a sensible idea, says Faith Goodman, for double jab passports might prevent long COVID problems in young people. Absolutely, and I think this sense of sort of not immortality, but untouchability that youngsters have. I think, you know, long COVID, I mean, Maddie hasn't had a sense of smell for a year. And OK, you could argue that's quite a benign symptom. It was a symptom, actually, that drove Michael Hutchins to distraction. If you see the documentary about Michael Hutchins, the singer. Um, Gabrielle, if it's about being double jab, then why can't all double jab people do what they like now and not have to isolate? Very valid point. I mean, I think where this decision shows up other sort of insanities in the system, that's fair, that's fair and good. But part of me, and I can't, you know, I'm not sitting here strongly advocating this, but part of me thinks there's something sensible about proving your double jab to go to a nightclub. I don't think many people who are vulnerable or old and infirm are going to want to go to nightclubs. And I also think genuinely the government, they may well, this may well not go through, this may well not happen, uh, Andrea Jenner, yes, 60,000 of football, I agree. There are, there are contradictions everywhere. The argument would be that 60,000 of football were all outside. He, but, 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 yeah, RM's jams, you're right. Boris does need to be careful about his backbenchers. I need to be careful about my backbenchers. Uh, select committee, 1922 select committee. Even that sounds so conservative, the 1922 select committee. Um... I had no smell or taste for 10 months, makes eating so difficult, Claire Cummings. Yeah, you see, Mark, you saw, I just didn't want to, oh, bless you, okay. Um, no, no, it, well, it wasn't at all, your email was really lovely and meaningful, but um, yeah, just drop us a line. Um, Zara Tara, 60% of people have been double jabbed, just shows you can still get it and pass it on, therefore I think it would be more beneficial for a negative test. Interesting, that's an interesting perspective. So in that sense, a negative test as you go in. Did you see the journalist who did 10 negative tests in one go? I think he was for the independent. 
uh, online paper. He took 10 tests, six came back um, negative, uh, four came back positive. What the hell does that mean? What are we meant to read from that? So negative test, so the, you know, the lateral flow testing and all that isn't necessarily reliable. I mean, to be honest with you, nothing's reliable, is it? It's exactly, Patrick, so you can get false negative tests. Christ, I didn't think we talked for so long about nightclubs. All this talk of nightclubs makes me want to dance. Does it you? Maybe not. Uh, Laura Lawler, agree, I'm only 42 shielding person, but I will not put myself in high-risk situations. You see, that's what I mean. I think, I don't think it's an infringement of human rights massively to not go to a nightclub, if I'm honest, where if you're older and infirm and da-da-da-da. If it moves, I mean, I'm a recovering alcoholic, but if it moves to pubs, I think that's a different thing. And I can see why there would be objections to that. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, alcohol is the instigator of stupidity and close proximity, isn't it? I mean, how many times did I think that a complete stranger or someone I couldn't stand at work was my brother after eight pints? You're that good brother! Yeah, we've got to go out more often! Next morning, who the fuck was that? Do you know what I mean? I'm dreading going back behind the bar, Sarah Markey. Yeah, so anyway, so that, that, that's nightclubs and that's vaccine passports, I suppose. Uh, Catherine Boomer, I read yesterday, best way, yes, we've been saying the best way to beat stress is to turn off the news. Even the World Health Organization, which is a bit of a crackpot organization, um, even they say, limit your news, your news, exposure to news. Because exposure to news can do your head in, as it's done mine in, you can tell. Um, Prince Harry's memoir. What do you think on that? No, Nadia is with Lisa, drinking probably constant bottles of gin. Um, Arthur, Dudley Moore was a brilliant drunk. He's very funny. If you haven't seen, on that drunk thing, if you want to see a great portrayal of someone who's drunk, check out the Peter Sellers film, The Party. It falls apart, falls apart a bit towards the end. But, and it's, probably massively politically incorrect now because Peter Sillers plays an Indian actor. But check it out because there's a waiter at this house party, the party, who is such a brilliant drunk. It's worth it. It's worth the price of the ticket alone just to see that. Oh, Courtney C watched another round last night. Loved it. It's interesting, isn't it? I found it a really interesting movie. Check it out. We've done a review of it. Um, Sam JP, definitely whack up the music, sing along and dance. I do it when I'm home alone, great way to relax. I do too, unless I'm in a really down place, in which case most music makes me want to cry. Um, anyway, so Prince Harry, I read that yesterday and thought it was a joke about Prince Harry. Claire comments, I mean, okay, here's the thing. I think it's absolutely fine he can do whatever he wants to do. But there is becoming a massive contradiction between um, wanting privacy and plopping it all out there. No problem if they don't want privacy. And I think no problem with, like for example, uh, I have no problem with Meghan Markle's animation series for Netflix, that's fine. Okay, that's just a commission, boom, that's fine. Um, but there does appear to be something, and, and I just think at the point where presumably they're building connections within the royal family or building bridges or, you know, repair, repairing roads, uh, uh, making bridges stronger so that buses can drive over, big, big, long, bendy buses. Um, curious time to kind of suggest writing your memoirs. Don't you know what I mean? Tracy Lawrence, writing memoirs and doing chat shows is not really going to give them the privacy they asked for. No, you're absolutely not. They want, they want back in for the christening, says Jenny J. Well, this is a curious way to go about it. Remember me, don't forget me, so fake. Uh, remember Brenda McGee. Uh, remember me, don't forget me, so fair. Oh, you're suggesting that's what they're kind of saying. Uh, privacy has never been so public. Nicholas Straw, what did Aaron's Jam say? Mark Okerby, oh God, Harry, stop it now. It's not doing you any good mentally, putting yourself in this critical limelight. Uh, oh, thank you, Sharon Louise. Um, oh, just flick that up. Uh, why should Megan get a deal like that? So easy, not fair on likes of yourself. Well, yes, I guess so. But you know, at the end of the day, 
it's not surprising, but also it doesn't, it doesn't flag up the enormous contradiction between what they want um, and what they're doing. And I think it does. Um, I think, yeah. What do you think, guys? Do you think, do you think, uh, I said he's a hypocrite, Orange Jams. Okay, I think he's being micromanaged by his wife, says Cloda. Uh, attention seeking anything for money, tedious trading on his royal connection that he is very busy trashing. I tell you what, guys, my armpits are getting really hot in this discussion. Is anyone else's? Whew. Um, Jenny J, Harry's wife needs the money. Uh, Kirsty Jane, they want their own privacy, but Meghan Markle made a film. Jane Bentley, that's what I think. Why now? Why not let the dust settle? Quite agree. Let the dust settle. I don't think there would ever be a good moment for a memoir. I mean, if the memoir is solely about his POV and involves no comments about anyone else, well and good. But how interesting a memoir is that going to be? Hot armpits all the time, so unique. Yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? Um, everyone should have the right to privacy and control of when and how you share aspects of your life. I agree, I agree. But I suppose don't be surprised if you forego the privacy you've requested. Uh, Matthew Godwin, hope you're well, Matthew. If they want privacy, stay out of the public spotlight for a while. Penny Shrimpton, uh, I think he's just so messed up and can't deal with anything, so he's just trying to swim above water. So it's kind of like treading water, you mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Angela Thompson, I don't want to see Harry hurt his family anymore. Um, He's not a good influence on young people. How to live a good, kind life. Be kind and you get paid lots of money. Not right. Uh, Brenda McGee, will it be sold though? Uh, oh, I see. He writes his memoirs and then sells it as a dramatisation. Nicola Higgins, add sweaty boo pits to armpits. It's uh, an image to conjure. All right. <laughs> I'm going for a driving lesson in this heat. Kerry J. Williams, ouch. Ooh. Who are Cantona? So, well, on that note, so Prince Harry's memoir, I think we're all kind of in agreement on that, aren't we? Um, overheating, we've kind of talked about that, but it is, it is a curious one in that um, the, me the meteoro meteorological, meteorolog meteorological, I can't, can't say that word, um, the meteorological, what's it called? The Met Office, that's better. Uh, issued its first ever amber extreme heat warning in the UK. That's quite something, isn't it? Now, again, we've talked about this before. You can either go, yeah, I can run around in this, or you go, ooh, this is a bit of a worry. Um, if you think of things like Vancouver and Pakistan and the floods in Germany, there's a connection. I was intrigued by a thought. Who had the thought earlier um, that COVID is in a sense, f sort of cover for the idea that global warming has got much worse. Because, you know, in a curious way, we're probably at the le least polluting point. Re-air travel, it's a, curious, it's a curious thought. I don't necessarily think any of these governments or leaders have such joined up thinking. But it would be kind of nice in a weird way. I would kind of go, oh, you know, I hear dry heat is the worst, Jenny J. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, have a great day, Paula Wears. Um, so yeah, heat wave, be, basically be careful out there. Be careful with your pets. Uh, it's verging on, I hear, cruelty to let your dogs out above a, a certain heat. So keep them in shadow, in shade, indoors. Um, and yeah, final thought here, actually. One of the headlines about Prince Harry's memoir, uh, what is this? Uh, is this The Independent? Uh, Daily Beast. Prince Harry's memoir is the stuff of nightmares for the royal family. So there we go. So yes, final, final part of the, part of the, part of um, Coffee Morning. Lloyd Webber Fury. Now, Andrew Lloyd Webber has had to, now the, the headlines are a bit misleading on this. They said he's shut down Cinderella and there was a suggestion that he's just closed it down. He's had a, an understandable hissy fit and said, that's it, fuck it all. Uh, but I think one of the supporting cast members, who actually has a cameo, to quote Lloyd Webber, tested positive, and then they had to go into the hole, test everyone, everyone else was negative, 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 negative. What I didn't understand was if everyone else was negative, oh, well, it, they had to go into isolation. So as he describes it, uh, he, he said, the blunt instruments of isolation and COVID policy uh, means that his West End show, Cinderella, was cancelled. Now. Cancelled, I read as, for good. 
but I can't believe he would tip all that investment and effort down the drain. So I wonder if there's a bit of brinksmanship going on here, where Lloyd Webber is using the threat of closing such a massive tourist draw, though, let's not forget, even America has upgraded uh, our level to level four due to the Delta variant. So flights from America less likely to come here and us traveling to America less likely to go there. Um, so, you know, so Lloyd Webber, I think, could be crying wolf. I, and I understand why, because he's trying to nudge the government into some kind of action. Uh, what do you think, guys? They'll be back, Sarah Fox. Yeah, so, you know, the headlines are kind of like, it's cancelled, it's over, it's shut, it's closed down. But I think it's for like two weeks or ten days. Um, he said, Andrew Lloyd Webber said, today on this Freedom Day, I've been forced to take the heartbreaking decision not to open my Cinderella. Freedom Day has turned into closure day. And as Bagpuss went to sleep, all the mice on the mouse organ went to sleep. We will build it, we will build it, we will build it. Buh, buh, buh. Hey, you, you. Thingy the woodpecker goes to sleep. Thingy the thingy goes to sleep. I used to love bagpuss. Um, I used to eat oxtail soup at my grandfather's feet whilst he was asleep. But I think he was pretending to be asleep because I was just as fucking annoying when I was a child as I am now, asking constant questions. But anyway, so my granddad pretending to be asleep, me eating oxtail soup, always wondering, is this actually the tail of an ox? Watching Bagpuss. Yeah. That was my summer. Every, every afternoon, that was my summer. That and Hartley here. Hit the thumbs up, guys, if you have anywhere near a vaguely fun experience this morning. And we'll all see you later. Oh, uh, we're going to watch the Dominic Cummings film, and depending on what he says, we might do a little review or reaction to it. Pipkins, yeah, that's it, Pipkins. We should do daytime kids' TV shows, specifically. Um, okay, guys, have a lovely day. Stay safe. Um, be, please be careful in the heat. It's going to get frighteningly hot. And uh, a quick hello to Pete O'Sullivan. Take care, guys. Bye.